And now I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Ronald Rappé. Dr. Rappé is professor in the Department of Psychology, Macquarie University in Sydney, Australia, and director of the Center for Emotional Health. He is associate editor, editor for behavioral research and therapy, and an advisor to the Anxiety Disorders Committee for the DSM-5. His main areas of research are anxiety and depression across the lifespan. He has developed models of development and maintenance of anxiety disorders. He is primarily responsible for the Cool Kids series of treatment programs and manuals for the treatment of anxious children and adolescents, which are used around the world and translated into several languages. Please join me in welcoming Ron Rappé. this thing, don't I? Ah, oh, that was easy. No? Yeah. <coughs> Hang on, what have I done? I hope this is not eating into my time. Oh, there it is. No, it's discussion issues. Oh, there it is, there it is. Current slide from beginning. Yeah. You, you fangled gadgets. <laughs> okay, we're finally on track. Um, well, thank you, Heidi, for organising this uh, this series. This is um, very exciting. Um, I must say, uh, when uh, it's it's a very Australian thing to apologise or to <laughs> to make uh, negative comments. So I'll just start by saying, when uh, Heidi first um, uh, asked me to be involved in this. Uh, she, uh, she started organising this, I guess, um, well over a year ago, wasn't it? Probably uh, almost a year and a half, 15 months or something ago, um, which uh, I have a terrible memory, so I can barely remember back, uh, I can barely remember breakfast, so let alone uh, a year and a half ago. Um, and uh, at that stage, I think I was, uh, my work is uh, a lot of work to do with interventions and, and clinical focus, clinical treatments, um, that sort of thing primarily, and, and plus a, a lot of psychopathological work looking at um, risk factors, developments of disorders. Uh, and I was obviously going through some phase where I was completely disillusioned with my work, which happens approximately every couple of days, um, when Heidi asked me to be involved. So I threw out all my work and said, I not, don't want to talk about any of that. I'm going to talk about something completely completely esoteric and theoretical, which is having a look at whether temperament and disorder are the same thing or different things. And um, a year and a bit later, as I was preparing for this, I looked at that topic and thought, why did I ever say I would talk about this topic? So here I am. Uh, it's very appropriate, I guess, as the first uh, talk in this series. It fits nicely with the series. But it's, I have to say it's not an area that I'm particularly familiar with myself. Um, we'll fumble through it together. but it's. Um, uh, to, to this day, I still have no idea why I ever said I would talk about this. But nonetheless, I've said it and I'm committed to it, so we'll, uh, we'll go through. What I did think was that it's, uh, it's a pretty dry sort of topic. Um, it's very theoretical and very sort of nitpicky and it's pretty dry. So along the way, I've thrown in a few photos of Australia because I thought maybe that might uh, <laughs> help loosen things up again and uh, might be something a bit more interesting. And if people want to ask questions about the photographs later on, you're very welcome rather than the talk. Okay, no. Oh, there's the first one. <laughs> this, this is my hometown, Sydney, um, which is on uh, New Year's Eve. So we have um, a great big fireworks display down at the Harbour Bridge at every New Year's Eve, and we all go down there with um, big, I was going to say big eskies, but you have no idea what an esky is, do you? Cooler, icebox, is that, yeah, um, with these big, yeah, coolers, um, of, uh, full, of, full of beer usually and uh, occasionally a bit of food as well, and we sit around and, uh, and wait for the fireworks. So that was one of the... Uh, one of the evenings there. Okay, I'm going to start out with a, as a clinical person, start out with a case um, to, to set the scene. So this is um, obviously a completely made up case. This is Sue, um, who is a developmental psychologist studying preschool friendships. I don't know if it sounds familiar around here. Um, at one preschool she meets Tim, who's a four-year-old boy, and she sees Tim standing alone watching the other children playing. When Sue goes up and says hello, Tim doesn't answer and just stares down at the ground. The teacher asks Sue um, why Tim rarely joins in with the other children and seems very scared of adults and hates to try anything new. 
And Sue just says, oh look, Tim's just a typical shy boy. Nothing to worry about, or nothing, no big deal. He's a normal, shy sort of kid. That afternoon, Tim's mother is talking to a clinical psychologist friend called Sam, and the mother explains how worried she is about Tim, who rarely joins in with other children, is scared of adults, hates trying anything new. Same things the teacher just said. She describes how sad she feels when she sees Tim standing alone watching the other children playing. Sam replies that Tim appears to have an anxiety disorder and would benefit from a few sessions with a clinical psychologist. So I'm setting the scene there, we've got Tim, he's the same kid, and he's in two different settings, or in two different perspectives, mum's perspective about her worry, talking to a clinical psychologist, the developmental psychologist seeing him at, place, uh, at preschool, and they're describing, in a sense, two different problems. One saying he's a normal shy kid, the other saying he's got a problem, he's got an anxiety disorder. And the question is, are these just the same thing? Are we just saying we're talking about exactly the same sorts of behaviours, exactly the same sorts of issues um, from two slightly different perspectives, as Heidi was saying in her introduction? Or are we looking at two problems, or two, not, I shouldn't call them problems, two issues um, in the one child? Could this child be both? Well, that's my next thing. Would we say that Tim has both a shy temperament and an anxiety disorder? Or are we simply talking about exactly the same thing? Are we talking about one thing that two experts just, are just giving two different labels to? This is uh, down in Tasmania, a fabulous spot. If anyone is into nature and hiking, um, this is uh, the very south of Australia, Tasmania, a place called Cradle Mountain. And that mountain in the back is Cradle Mountain. And if anyone is into some very, very tough hikes, that is a very difficult hike. We didn't actually do that. We just walked around the lake at the bottom because I have two young children. and <laughs> My two kids, if we take them anywhere further than a few steps, would start complaining. So there's no way we're going over the mountain. Uh, but there's an amazing um, walk you can do over it that takes a few days uh, up over the mountain there. OK, let me um, just quickly set the scene with some terminology. I think Heidi started to... Um, talk about this and I'm calling this idealised terminology because it's a bit of an extreme position. I realise not everyone agrees with these uh, concepts entirely but you can talk about temperament um, which you can think about as perhaps a basic component of a person's underlying constitution. It, we might think about it as a sort of a basic neurobiological ar architecture that's reflected in some sort of emotional and, and behavioural responsiveness and should be carried across situations and across time. Within that terminology, there's uh, what I'm referring to as fearful temperament. Um, Heidi mentioned there's a whole lot of different labels that are given uh, that people talk about. Um, there are several sort of temperament types that people talk about. Most people, there's, there's a lot of disagreement um, as far as I can tell amongst uh, developmental psychologists, temperament researchers, but in general, most would agree that there's some sort of basic emotional type, um, which people would often refer to as emotionality, neuroticism, negative affect. Um, and within negative affect, there's this sort of fearful type, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, and different labels are given to that, shyness, inhibition, behavioural inhibition, approach avoidance, reticence, harm avoidance. Um, now some of those people define in different ways and they refer to different aspects and different specificities. Other times people use them interchangeably. Again, there's not a lot of total, there's not complete consistency, but broadly speaking we're talking about a, a general tendency to be fearful in situations. And there's a wide variety of definitions and measures. From a clinical perspective, then, you've got anxiety disorder, which you would perhaps refer to as a related set of symptoms, beliefs, behaviours, that again broadly reflect fearfulness or fear, um, and that are demonstrated in response to a specific set of triggers. And the different anxiety disorders would, would be different based on the specific triggers. So you can have several types of anxiety disorder depending on the specific set of the particular triggers that, uh, that elicit the fear. Um, so social phobia is in response to social cues, and I guess that's primarily what we're uh, talking about in this series. You can have panic disorder, agoraphobia, that's triggered by different sorts of cues, interoceptive cues. You can have separation anxiety, different set of cues, and, and so on, generalised anxiety. So different sorts of anxiety disorders, but all fundamentally focused around fearfulness or, or, or fear of some type. 